got something to offer, yes? And even if you're part of a family out there, not just a church family, but I want you to know that you're significant and you've got something positive to contribute to your family, to the community, and also to the church. Everybody's got something to give. And that's why it's important for us to understand this principle so that when we come to this church and you're looking at, at some of us look at people and think, man, this guy probably have no talents. Hang on. He's probably got more than you. And you need to understand that God has given you something to give, to offer, to build into the family, into the community, and into the church. And when we make a challenge and we throw out an ask about coming to join the praise and worship team, and you know you can sing in a shower, you're qualified. If you can whistle, you're qualified. And if we ask you to come and join the men's ministry, and if you're just simply a male in the house, you're qualified to be part of the men's ministry. Amen. Say this with me. I've got something to offer. And if your wife is next, sitting next to you and your husband said, Honey, i got something to offer. But be careful that she does not slap you on you. Anyway, everybody's got something to offer. Is that true? Yes. Listen to this. Our growth and maturity and perfection depends on each other. You know what? The person that I am today is because of Tina in my life. And that's true. If you know David Vaca uh, 10, 20 years ago, you'll be freaking out because all you could see is an immature, depressed maybe. Shut up. <laughs> Prideful. Think I know it all. I don't need anybody. I'm the best looking guy in. No, I'm just kidding. If you have known David Vaca 20 years ago, honestly, I tell you this, you'll probably run away from the church he's at. But after being married for 14 years, the Lord used my wife to process me, to break me, to make me, to mold me. And I'm not lying, I am the person, the product that you see here today is because of this woman and God in my life. I'm not lying. And there are other people that have also contributed to my development. And that's the people I work with, the people in the church that I planted. Most of you have also contributed to my development. But the principle is clear. You need people around you because your growth and maturity and perfection depends upon them. Amen? Is that true? It's true. So if you're married here, you need your wife, husband, and wife, you need your husband. And guess what? Together, you need your children. I need you. I will never stand up here and say, I don't like this church. I actually like this church. Even if you cause me pain, that pain is good for my development and my maturation. Amen. So if you have pain at home between husband and wife, don't moan. Lift up your head, head, your head to God and praise him for your process. The very woman that he has given you. And all the men say, <laughs> and here's a wise saying, can I say this to you? I want everybody to take this and memorize this. And please say it to yourself in the mirror. You don't know everything. Don't say it here, but just go home and say it in the mirror. 1 Corinthians 12, the scripture is up there. I want you to us to read this because I'm almost done. Are you enjoying this? All right. Are this helping you? All right. 1 Corinthians 12, 20, 26. This is what the Bible says. But now indeed there are many members. Look around this room. There's so many people here, members. I'm hoping that eventually you will all become members of Breakthrough Church. This is speaking about the church body and all these different members. And look at what the Bible said. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care and concern for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffers with it. And if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. 
Listen, look around this room and say, I need my brother, I need my sister. Don't be a hero and think you can go alone in your journey with God all by yourself. You just come to church and stay disconnected. Get connected so that because we want to feel your pain and we want to celebrate your victories. We want to be there for you. When you're going down, we want to feel you going down so we can help you out. But if you stay disconnected, you'll disappear and nobody knows what happened to you. And don't you ever say, well, I don't need my brothers, my sisters. That's what the Bible said. The body, the eye and the nose and the ears and the hands and the feet cannot fight among themselves. I don't need you. Listen, the reason why David Vaca is alive today because all my members of my body are working together for this one life. Right? And if you want to survive this journey in the kingdom and also in this world, I want you to know that there are members here that you need. There are so many wise people here that us young people need to sit with and learn from. And also the mature can also learn from us who are growing up in this place. We need each other. The last one, get involved this year. There's some principle up there. I just want you to look at it and um, don't look at the person next to you, but just allow it to hit you and deal with you. Don't point fingers. If you are a person that have just been coming to church the last couple of years and you know and you're here but you're not really here and when everybody's putting up their hands to do things and you know you want to but you just can't put up your hands I want you to get involved this year don't be like that amen don't just come to church just to receive and to take but put in invest something because you know what if you put in you'll reap so much back how many of you here, you cannot just go to the bank and expect to withdraw without putting some money into your account? Some of us have done that. We went to the bank and they said, what do you want? Uh, 200000 And they open up your account. There's nothing in it. Are you crazy to go to the bank and expect that much money you haven't put anything in? And some people in the kingdom of God have got the same mindset. I can just go there and do nothing and receive along the way. It won't work. Eventually you'll find out later that it's not going to work. Listen to this. Don't be a spectator, but be a participator this year. Don't be a consumer, but be a producer. There are people who just like to consume. Take, take, take. They don't put anything back. Don't be a reaper, but a sower. Here's what I'm thinking about this, that, you know, we put out the uh, message on times and offering. I like the little mouse message that uh, Daniel put out today. And, um, you know, and people are putting their money, uh, putting their money faithfully. And suddenly we have a big building. I'm going to look back in the books and say, only the people that have been tithing faithfully are allowed to come into our new building. Those of you that never put anything in, find another church. It's, all, it's, it's always the people who did nothing are the first one to jump in when they see something being accomplished. <laughs> Amen? You believe that? That happens a lot. Some people just sit and watch. I like to see what happened. And others just work and they labor and they produce. When something happened, they jump in. Uh, let's backtrack a little and see how many years have you been here? Uh, five. How much have you done? nothing so why should we take you on board on this on this journey i'm not saying we would do that because we're christians but the principle in life is don't live like that don't be a taker but give don't just atten attend church but be the church mm -hmm. don't just come here and just enjoy the service but become part of the church be the church don't ask what the church can do for you, but rather ask what you can do for the church. Yes? Some of you probably think, well, David, I don't really have a talent. Well, I can tell you a few things you can do before you discover your talents. You can pray for the pastor. That's investment. That's giving. You can come and do my lawn. <laughs> Everybody can do that. I'm just kidding. You can put in your tithes and offering, you know, if you have 
two cents, or maybe two dollars. You can put it, that's an invest, that's, that's putting in. Or maybe you can just come and stand at the door with Richard and Phyllis and say, Hi, everybody, welcome to church. You can do that, right? Everybody's got a mouth, everybody's got hands, everybody's got pretty faces here. Or you can go up to the car park and just direct all the traffics and make sure that they are parked properly in the school car parks. And not one car taking up two car parks. You don't have to know what that you can, you don't have to wait till you know that you can preach or play the drums or get up here on the keys. or Listen, there's so much you can do already. Start with that. And God will bless you as you begin to get involved in the house. Amen. Don't ask what the church can do for you, but ask rather this year, what can I do for the church? How many of you here would like to get involved in a church this year? Don't put your hands up because I've seen a lot of people put their hands up before they're not here anymore. <laughs> I have met so many people in the history of Breakthrough. Pastor, we're here. We want to die for the vision. As soon as the ship hit a rock, they're the first one to jump. So many people make so many promises and they just don't have the ability to keep it. Like decide in your heart. If you're going to do it, just do it. What's our saying from the last time? Just Nike it. And here's our last one because I think we've got time for one more. Is that right? Liz, put it up. Build my house and I will build your house. This is linked to our uh, previous principles, but the Bible is very clear that if you help build the church of God, God will build your house, meaning your marriage, your children, your own personal finance. God will bless your house if you help build the house of God. Here's a principle I want to throw in there. Our personal success and prosperity are inextricably linked to our service in God's house. Whatever you do in here, I tell you this, will determine the success and the prosperity that will happen to you out there. Let me tell you a true story. Two things you must have in your Christian walk is love Jesus and be a member of a church and get involved. I've seen a lot of people very talented and some have actually come to our church very talented and they can claim they love Jesus but because they're not connected to the church they go up quickly and they, have, they fizzle out also very quickly at the same time. There's a, a, a young girl, and I just want to make this very clear. There's a young girl who is out there. I think she's in New York right now. You all know Beck Lawton. She performed for Icon. One thing I know about that girl, her success is a testimony to her love for God and her connection to this house. She's not here every Sunday, but we know her heart because we talk with her. Her heart is to be here and to help this house. And that's why her, she's so successful out there because of her heart to build the house of God. You do the same. I tell you this. God will bless your business if you're running a business. God will bless your marriage if, if you're struggling in that area. God will bless whatever you do because your prosperity and success out there is linked to your service in the house of God. Can I also say this to you? The measure you give to God's house, God will also use the same measure for you multiply. God will take what it is that you've given to his house and he will bless you. And I tell you, the blessing of God will be so unlimited. So I just want to finish off with that and ask you guys this year, what do you want to change for 2013?